everyone. Welcome to the LA Goals podcast. I'm your host, Essie Magic, featuring LA's most successful game changers. I'm super excited. We have the wonderful Lindell Sperling on the show, and we are going to talk about how to dress for success. Lindell, welcome. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're so excited to have you here. There's definitely a lot of entrepreneurs, creatives, and people looking to dress for success and learn a lot of tips because a lot of times people don't actually think about that and they just kind of throw on whatever. So definitely excited to have you here. Um, I would like to start right from the beginning with you. Um, let us know uh, what made you decide to get started and tell us a little bit about your business. I'd love to. I spent a lot of time in a cubicle and one of my last corporate jobs was a very controlled dress code. And I always felt this conflict with who I was and trying to conform. And on the side, I was always helping my friends to shop. And even before I became a stylist, I had put a friend who was attending the Oscars on the red carpet. So I knew it was something that I really wanted to do. And if it doesn't sound arrogant, I felt like it was something I was good at too. So I spent a lot of time building up a nest egg before venturing out and the timing was right. I was going through some changes in life and I became a wardrobe stylist by going to styling schools, researching, networking, and seeking out from a lot of different mentors how I would structure my business, how I would craft my offerings, and just heading out and making cold calls and meeting people and trying to find clients. I love what you said there about mentors because so many entrepreneurs and creatives or people with big goals don't realize how important it is to have a mentor and how it can be pivotal in the direction of your business. I would love if you could give us uh, some more details about how you went about getting mentors, whether it be cold calling like you mentioned, or was it through networking or referral? I'd love if you can give us some details about that. I think it's absolutely essential. And for me, one of the first things I did is I opened myself up to other people's input, advice, and wisdom. And I had a business degree undergraduate, I had an MBA, but when I decided I wanted to be a wardrobe stylist, I went to a female co-working space and they were having a business incubator where a number of different women were coming together to write a business plan. The whole weekend had been reserved for it. You could present your ideas, your pitches, and get other people's input. So there were people just beginning their journey and the founder of Hera Hub, where I went, had so much success and credibility that having her input provided an entirely different perspective. So I sat there and put my ideas onto paper and then allowed other people to give me criticism, encouragement, and really make my perspective broader. In addition, I felt like I needed a coach, and a coach is somebody who not only gives you all of that benefit, but they push you to be bigger and better than you are. And I was lucky because my dad is a tremendous coach. That was even his parenting style. He has built sales teams. He has created tremendous things in a group setting. And he was there the days that I felt defeated or discouraged or confused about how to proceed. And one of those days I had gone to a biotech women's event and I really thought those were gonna be my ideal clients. And I found out I was wrong. And I felt so just like the wind out of my sails. And my dad looked at me and he said, what you're doing is hard. If everybody could do it, they'd be in your seat trying to do it because it's perceived as a fun job. And for a lot of us that are creative, that's the challenge. People think it's easy because it's fun, but you need someone there to get your shoulders back up and your head pointing forward on the days where you need to make slight changes to your model or even dramatic ones. So I was lucky that I had women that could be mentors, that could be support network, and also people that were coaching me because doing a new business starting from zero, you have a lot of things that are uphill until you get to the plateaus or the crest of that hill. Yeah, and, and also too, in terms of learning from other people, did you kind of pick up on, you know, what celebrities were doing? I know you said you went, you went to styling school, but were there any main role models who were, you know, or somebody you aspired to be like that was out there that influenced, uh, whether it be you wanting to be a personal stylist or even just their style or how they went about doing their business? 
Yes, there were actually a number of people. And what I look at is a woman who is not just successful in her own right, but has created a vision that can inspire others. And so there are historic figures, there are people that are currently in the space doing things. And then there are people that have skills that I don't, that I look to, to try and see how could I be more like them. And a lot of these women were doing things that not only bettered the community that they were in, products and services that created jobs that enabled women to get ahead in industries that were very competitive. So I think all of that is important because what we do in a collective conscious way is not just going to help ourselves to be better, but it's also going to make the world a brighter place. And that just creates ripple effects that make clients happy, that create opportunities for others down the road that we don't even know yet. And even in the sense of networking, getting to learn what others do so that if I'm at a networking event, I can be of service and value by saying to somebody that I meet, like if I just had met you today, I could say, I know people that offer things that are useful for you personally or for your audience. So really having a large net in order to make sure that everything that I did was not just to the best of my ability, but also was helping others in a way that added value and differentiated me. I wanted to be different than others while making sure that what they did that was great, I could incorporate in my own unique manner. Wonderful. You mentioned uh, woman empowerment a couple of times now. Can you speak a little bit about why, you know, that's important, other than the fact that you're a woman, but, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but I would love to hear more about why that specifically is really important to you. It's important because I think we're living in a time where people are recognizing that there is a lot of bias and a lot of judgment and a lot of behavior that even if subconscious can be used to not further the collective need to empower other women. So what I mean by this is when we're growing up, women are socialized differently than boys. Boys will go out and they'll play a game and it's competitive and after it's all over and I won and you lost and that kind of conversation happens, they're friends again. Women play with dolls and they do things that are group centered and there's a lot of research on this that shows that once you have Um, two women and you're on a plateau, but then one starts to come up, a lot of times the group will try to pull the other back down to where they are. And whether that's something that's intentional or it's just kind of incidental, it doesn't help women to get the opportunities. In the Fortune 500, we know there's just a single digit number of female CEOs. And a lot of that has to do with being given the opportunity. And we have so many qualified women. And because of technology and because of the new environment that we are in, where women are more educated and there's more of a platform, we have the opportunity to shine and shine brighter and be given opportunities. So when they come up, we need to make sure that we're encouraging others, even if they're further ahead in their journey than we are, or if they're further behind by trying to make sure that you're of service and value to them so that the equalization is accelerated. Wow. Okay. I love that. I'm also for women empowerment. So everything you you just said, I love it. (laughs) Um, I do want to get into some specifics about, you know, your work life and and how you actually run your business. Um, If you could speak to uh, what your business actually consists of in terms of, you know, are you styling people from top to bottom? Is it for only special events? Is it for day to day? Are you giving tips on, you know, I'm going to work nine to five every day. Do you give tips for that? Or is it just special events? I think people would love to hear more about exactly what you do from a day to day basis. I'd love to share that. My clients are traditionally female entrepreneurs. They're highly educated. They work very, very hard. And most of them get paid after they've rendered their service. So things like real estate, legal profession, medical, it's not like they're sitting around in a corner office and there's nothing wrong with that, but they are hustling and they're doing things where they get paid afterwards. So every day when they go out, they have the opportunity to meet new clients. They have the opportunity to use their image to further their business. So it's important for them to look good, whether it's in a quick blog post or an Instagram live. So the 
the lesson for me was as I was structuring a business, I needed to have predictable revenue and I wanted to get into a niche because there are riches in niches. It's a trite phrase, but that is true. And you want to get your business to where you're seeing the same types of people, people that know each other that are in the same industry, because then you have a, um, level of efficiency because you know the types of events that they're going to go to, the types of needs and requirements that they have. So for me, female entrepreneurs, there were a lot of similarities and it made it easier for me to provide value because my experience doing it got to be great very quickly. And the great thing about business people is that um, they understood that I had a business. It wasn't a hobby. So we had a mutual respect for one another. So the vast majority of work that I do is with business women and, you know, we'll kind of look at a time frame, and they'll say to me, and it's changed a little bit because of COVID. These are the things I have coming up. I have a photo shoot. I have open houses. I'm a speaker here. I've got a graduation or a vacation. And so what I do is I bring items to them. I bring them outfits, I bring them solutions, I bring them accessories. So head to toe, unless someone doesn't have an interest in that. And when I leave their home or their business, what they have is a need that's been met. They can start their day with an outfit that they know they don't have to put together because that can cause stress and anxiety. They can walk out the door and know it represents their brand and their values and it projects confidence and it projects an enthusiastic high energy vibration to the people that they come in contact with. I also do a lot of work with photographers because when people are going to a photo shoot, there's a lot of things that they need to do. They need to know what type of images they want, how they're gonna use them. But then it's really hard to get all of that out of a closet, kind of because we don't dress for photography, we dress for fun and different colors, fabric styles, textures look good on film. So I prepare people for that. And the same is true for speaking events because there'll be photographs or video and they need to have the right colors and textures because if you're sitting on a director's chair speaking and you're tall, your outfit might be too short. So I do a lot of work like that with my clients and I work with men too, but it's a little easier because the suit makes them look good regardless. I love how you mentioned, uh, you know, the mistake of your, your dress is too short or something you're on a stage. Can you reveal some of the biggest mistakes you see people having when they're, they're dressing up or just dressing for success? Sure. A really important thing to do when you're a public figure or you're the center of attention or you're going to an event is to make sure that you've seen your outfit from all angles and to take pictures of it. So what I have on is a color that I love. It makes me feel happy. But if I was going on TV and I've worn this dress on TV, it adds volume. It's a fabric called scuba. It, it sort of covers all your um, bigger areas and things like that. But on camera, it has a little bit of a reflective texture to it. So I was horrified the first time I saw it. I thought, oh my gosh, not only did the camera add weight, but that dress did too. So it's important <laughs> to think about where you're going. And if you're going to be outside and you're going to be sitting down and standing up, if you start to get warm, does the item stick to you? So you have to think about your start to finish. If you're getting out of a car, how is that going to look? If you have to stand up and sit down, can you stand in your shoes? So you need to think from finish is it comfortable? Is it functional? And how does it look under photography? So it's kind of the three Fs. Is it fun? Is it functional? And is it, you know, it's not an F in photography, but the, you know, print in there can kind of give you a little bit of a cheat sheet to go with. Nice. I love the, the three Fs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I also, like, I didn't know you get so uh, granular about like the fabrics. Can you give a little bit more detail about the importance of different fabrics and how you, you, you help people to decipher between which fabrics work for what? I think you would be very keen to, to hear that from you and how you go about helping people in that regard. Yeah, absolutely, because it is important. So in photography, you'll see a lot of items in Instagram, especially with bloggers that are so fun and they're so colorful. They're not things that you might wear day to day. So in a photo shoot, that's part of the fun of being a stylist is you can bring in pieces like that. It's hard, especially in bigger photography, when you see like a mural or, you know, a cityscape and the street style photography, you can do big hats and big skirts. And that's really, really fun. If you're going to be in a frame like this with Zoom or on a TV set in a chair, 
you don't want to overdo it because as women, we get judged very harshly. And if people think we look silly, it's going to denigrate the message that we're delivering. So a, a real practical life example of how it plays out for me is that if I'm going to a networking event and there's women, oftentimes I'm going to wear something that's more fun, bigger earrings, brighter colors. And I do that for two reasons. One is unusual and it can enable somebody who doesn't remember my name to introduce somebody else or point me out. So at a networking event wearing like bright pink or turquoise or green or red, it's a less common color. Most people wear black or navy or gray. So I've differentiated myself. I fit the brand of a stylist. I would still be professional. But if I go to an event where there's men, I would possibly maybe change my accessories because men are going to say, oh, that's so cute and it's kind of foolish. Women appreciate that we dress for each other and wear fun things. So situationally, we kind of need to think about those things because the fact is people judge and they will perceive how intelligent we are, how successful we are and things about us just based on the way that we dress. Yeah. And th that's the thing is we have to be realistic about that. I know people say, oh, you shouldn't be judged by how, you know, you appear and all that stuff. And um, I, I agree with that. But realistically speaking, people do judge on your clothing and how you present yourself and whether you're neat or or scruffy or whichever. So I really do like that. I like the point you mentioned as well about the um, the colors and how bright colors can really affect, uh, you know, how people uh, see you or, or if you're the center of attention. Do you have any other tips for kind of being the center of attention or getting people to notice you? And it doesn't have to be specifically clothing, it can even just be mannerisms. I yeah. do. And, you know, I'm all about differentiating yourself because when we go out into the marketplace, success comes from hard work, from opportunity, and a lot of things that we can control, a lot of things that we cannot control. So if we go out and we make ourselves look that like the best of what we're doing and we do it a little bit differently, they're going to remember us. And that's what's so hard. That's what's important about branding and messaging. So for me, I know who some of my fellow stylists are, and I think it's important to be on friendly terms with all of them, but I want to look and be different than they are. And part of the reason is, is because I target business people, business women. So I traditionally will wear like a business dress. And if I'm going to a place where I'm going to encounter all kinds of women and it's a women's only networking event, I might wear something that's v-neck. If I go out where there's men, I'm traditionally going to be more covered up because I don't want a man to remember what my body looks like as much as what my message looks like. So I kind of incent right. women to think that through. And a lot of people will say, well, wait, I, I have the right to do it and I'm in shape and I'm fit and I have the ability to do it. Why shouldn't I? It's just situational. And again, you can do so many fun things, but we just have to be really careful if it looks too much and if it's, in an environment where that overtakes and overpowers your message. And it's again, completely up to people. But if you Google, how does it affect a woman when she dresses provocatively or something like that, you'll find a lot of scientific studies from PhD students, from psychologists, from psychiatrists, from all sorts of credentialed people that will say, it really is something we need to pay attention to as females. And so I always mention that to people and it's up to them how they wanna play. Um, the decision, but I, I do think it's important that we be aware of it. That makes sense for sure. I want to switch gears a little bit and just, because uh, obviously your story is very uh, inspiring in itself. Thank I want to talk about some of your big successes. Uh, what would you say is your biggest accomplishment so far? Um, and also if you can kind of reveal that moment where you're like, wow, you know, I'm making it. I will. And for women, we always feel like we're not ready and it's hard to talk about our success. So as I share this story with you, it's like I might get a little emotional and I want to put it out there that we all will get to that point in our journey and it's different for everybody. And I heard you talk about this with some of your other guests, how success can be something for you that isn't really understood by others. But for me, I spent a lot of time early in this journey networking, going to so many events and trying so hard to meet people that were right, the right fit, the right values. And I felt we're going to be great confidants and allies as I moved forward. 
one of the other things I did is I had some opportunities and I knew that television was an extraordinary way and platform to differentiate myself. So I sought out a speech media, a coach who was a decorated journalist and I didn't care what it cost and I didn't care how humiliating it was, but I spent time with her and I took that feedback and I knew I had to get better. And she told me I needed to change some things about how I communicated and that was hard, but I did it. So one of my clients is a celebrity and was on the Vivica Fox show on Face the Truth. It was her second appearance. And at the time I went on set with her, I had had some devastating news earlier that week. The person that I was seeing was diagnosed with a terminal illness and was not given a lot of time. So you get into work mode and I got there and I, I said to myself, I have to be present in the moment. And being present in the moment enabled me to meet the producer of the show who said we have an extra spot and that spot was basically a couple minutes and she looked at my instagram page and said can you talk about this post that you had and so there's a couple like you know going deeper keep your social media clean because you never know when the moment will come where you have something out there you don't want out there so all these lessons came together going on set looking professional i was hair and makeup ready i had an instagram post that i could use to discuss social media so I got this airtime, Vivica Fox, people pay agents and PR people to do that. It was a great opportunity, but I had worked hard for it. And I had the media training to know exactly what to tell the producer. So fast forward three months and um, my, my dear friend and client said, let's have a viewing party. What we have here will be fun. We made it a networking event, invited people that would be interested in the show and could make connections. And there were a lot of women that made connections at that event that the moment for me where I was overwhelmed with emotion and in the moment, this journey of someone that was very close to me and very important in my life was going on their journey. So again, so much emotion, but during the show, a commercial that I had been in came on as one of the breaks. So there we are watching Vivica Fox all these women, I wanted to meet each other. My dad was there. There were so many wonderful things going on. And then in the commercial break, I stood there and I said, all this work paid off. I got these opportunities. And here's even a commercial for a business that I stand behind that I'm in, in the interim. And that for me was my definition of success. All of the pieces coming together, all of the investments I had made in other people, myself, and you know, being a lifelong learner all culminated in that one day. It was, it was tremendous. And I feel so grateful and so blessed that that opportunity was presented to me. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Very inspiring as well. Thank um, you. Speaking of uh, some of the people you've worked with, I don't know if it's confidential, but if you could re reveal some of the, the companies you've worked with or people you've worked with, I'm sure people at home would love to know. Yes, I'd love to. So for those who aren't familiar, please go seek out Elaine Swan with two N's. Elaine is the nation's leading etiquette expert. She is a tremendous woman. She has so much wonderful input that we can action, you know, take action on in our lives. And Elaine has been the greatest for me. She gave me an opportunity to be a stylist while I was still figuring out how to do it and took me along on all these sets. So I was able to learn the actual process, the protocol, the way you interact with people. And I grew so much from that experience. So she's allowed me to use her name and um, her images in my work. I've, I've worked with a number of different, you know, organizations behind the scenes, nonprofits. I've worked with the San Diego Enforcers. They're a dance team that represents um, the law enforcement professionals, first responders. And we created a calendar that generates money for the uh, United Cerebral Palsy of our local organization. I've worked with a local casino on the opening of the only five-star property in San Diego County. I've worked with some smaller organizations, some products that are healthcare related, that are um, home improvement and construction related. So I feel so tremendously blessed. Um, I'm, I'm just you know mentally kind of trying to go through all of it. Um, another cool company is called Behind the Buckle Belts and they have a belt that allows you to extend the reach of your pants because sometimes we need that, right? <laughs> So I've had a lot of wonderful opportunities. And again, I just feel so grateful and so blessed that they've been presented to me. And 
recognizing that I think is important too, that even though we might want to be further along and have more marquee names, just being grateful for where we are. That sounds amazing. So this is going to actually wrap up part one of this episode, but in part two, we're going to talk about Instagram. You mentioned Instagram. I would love for you to give us some tips on specific types of po photos to post, um, as well as some of the tools you used as a business owner getting started, and also your three tips for success for fellow uh, entrepreneurs. So you guys at home, head over to lagoals.com for part two. See you there.